Melissa from FIST, um, our staff, our board of directors. I do want to, uh, we do want to say we hope you are keeping safe and that you and your families are safe and well uh, during this time. Uh, we do really want to stress that although the BIST office is the physical space is currently closed, all our staff is still working very hard uh, to support our members um, and we are here for you if you do need anything. So um, you can always call the information line at 416-830-1485. If there's anything you need, um, that number is operating as it normally does as a resource line or to help you sign up for programs. Uh, but we're also using it as a warm line. So if you just want to talk to somebody during this time, if you have questions about COVID-19 or any of the news statements that come out every day, or you just want to have a chat because you're tired of talking to the same people who are in your house or maybe you're living at home on your own, um, give us a call. Uh, the phone will always be answered between noon and four every day. Um, but outside of that, always leave a message and somebody will get back to you. Um, the other thing I will mention is just like tonight's call. Um, all our programs have moved to this Zoom platform that we're using. Uh, so I'm, I'm quite pleased that so many people have found this and have registered for tonight. Um, all our programs will continue to operate this way. Uh, so again, you can use that number 416-830-1485. If you have any trouble registering for programs or if you have questions about what the upcoming webinars or support groups are, um, We'll certainly give that information to you. It will also be on our bis.ca website um, and all our programs will be sent out by email tomorrow. Um, we are also right now taking suggestions. If you're at home and you're thinking, wow, we'd really like it if BIST could do this for us, um, give us a call or you can send us an email to info at bist.ca. Um, and at that time, we can uh, certainly take your suggestion and Ryan, I'm sure will find a way to make it happen. So please continue to reach out and keep in touch. Um, that's all for me right now. I'm going to pass it on to Ryan, who's going to walk you through the Zoom um, platform and introduce our panelists for tonight. So take it away, Ryan. Thank you. Sorry, just give me one sec here. Thank you, Melissa, and hello to all of you. Thanks for attending. Um, before I get into my speech, uh, I do want to do maybe just a minute long orientation of Zoom. I see many names which is fantastic thank you all for being here but uh, perhaps not everyone knows what they're looking at so let, let's just take a minute and start to move your cursor around the screen toward the bottom you should see uh, a dark gray bar with some different buttons and i just want to draw your attention to two of them the chat button and the questions and answers button I know we can't see any of you, and that might feel like you can't participate, um, but we absolutely want you to be a part of the discussion. You all have a lot to add to what Simone and Natalie are talking about this evening, and you have the ability to use the chat to make a comment. We will be monitoring and responding throughout the presentation, but please save your questions uh, sort of for the end. I will be checking the questions throughout and sort of interrupting the presenters as uh, as they go if I think it's a good question but we will have a good chunk of time at the end for you to, to ask all of your questions um, but tonight tonight marks the last in our five-week ABI info series and I think we're ending on a, a real high note as we learn about compensatory strategies after a brain injury with some bonus tips regarding COVID-19 um, before we get into the presentation however I want to thank our corporate platinum sponsor PIA Law for helping us put on this series. This would be impossible without your support. And now more than ever, we are so grateful for having the ability to keep our community engaged and informed uh, despite the circumstances. So thank you, PIA Law. Okay, so now to tell you a bit more about our speakers, please welcome David McDonald. David is a partner at Thompson Rogers and a member of PIA. He is a trial lawyer who conducted Toronto's first personal injury paperless iPad trial. David has been going to trial and setting, settling catastrophic plaintiff personal injury cases and helping car, pedestrian, ATV, motorcycle, and boating accident victims who have suffered catastrophic injuries for more than 25 years. He has been source lawyer and co-counsel on matters which have settled for over $11 million and led counsel on matters which have settled for over $8 million. 
Most of his clients have suffered severe brain injuries, spinal cord injuries, or amputations arising from trauma. David represents clients from all across Ontario, including Thunder Bay, Ottawa, Windsor, Kingston, Sault Ste. Marie, Barrie, London, Hamilton, Niagara Falls, Oshawa, Huntsville, Toronto, and his hometown of Mississauga, where he, his wife Margaret, and their four boys live. David and everyone at PIA are dedicated to helping those who have suffered a brain injury continue to recover and pursue meaningful lives. You can find out more about David on the Thompson Rogers website, and as well as some other great information and resources on the PIA website. And I'll make sure to put a link to both of those in the chat. But welcome, David. Thank you very much, Ryan and Melissa. Thanks very much for inviting PIA to be sponsors. We're very pleased and, and proud to be able to assist in relation to this very important communication series that you set up and all the more timely in these circumstances. I really applaud you, Ryan and Melissa, for embracing technology to be able to reach out to this members, their family members and clinicians who are associated. And obviously to you, Simone and, and Natalie, for all of your efforts in putting together a very vibrant uh, and, and timely presentation today. Um, just from the point of view of what this, I think, is all about is connection and support. And I know that you're going as the audience and frankly, me and everyone else as individuals is going to create more connection during this time. And so we hope that you can embrace technology, but even low tech solutions are very helpful. And uh, to the extent that you wish to reach out to legal counsel by texting them, please ask for their cell phone number. I know that they will want to know how you're doing and the isolation is important for legal counsel and clinicians to know more about. So I know you'll hear much about that from Simone and Natalie. So I'd like to share a few words about uh, these excellent practitioners that I've known. Uh, Natalie um, graduated and got her occupational therapy degree the same year that I actually um, was called to the bar, Natalie. So you have you you really have done well since I personally need to have some physicians assist me with my uh, my recuperation uh, from the aging factors which have affected me since then. But it's uh, great to share that, Natalie, and more so though, it's great to have shared your clinical experience in relation to some of the clients that we have worked with around the province to uh, help them recover meaningful lives from very severe brain injuries. So helped um, to be always learning from you and from you, Simone. Um, Natalie is owning and running a, currently a private practice in Toronto, 365 Rehab, which provides assessment and treatment to individuals who've sustained brain injuries. And she's continued to develop her skills in the area of trauma, mindfulness, and cognitive behavioral therapy. Natalie um, is a world uh, ranger and has traveled to Ukraine over the past few years to promote the development of occupational therapy and to assist in the creation of occupational therapy programs and teach and mentor students. And she's a proud a founding member of the UK Ukrainian Society of Ergotherapists. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to hear what you and Simone have to have to talk to us about tonight. Simone, a speech language pathologist who owns and runs a clinic in Toronto uh, called Therapy Spot. And she has been assessing and treating brain injury uh, suffering uh, individuals or others with cognitive communication difficulties, um, secondary to brain injury, mental illness, or social communication difficulties for over 20 years. Um, and aside from running Therapy Spot and managing the 17 employees there working with clients, Simone is an adjunct professor with the U of T and teaches students how to build therapeutic relationship and develop meaningful treatment uh, goals with their clients. Um, that's not enough for Simone. She volunteers at the Remix Project and uh, assists um, her, her wonderful uh, family and husband uh, in their personal growth and sharing music, other interests, and uh, their wonderful dog. Um, and unfortunately, uh, Simone, I uh, didn't get to talk to you about your dog before. Well, what, what kind of a dog do you have? Sorry, I just had to unmute there. I have a, a combination of an English retriever, poodle, and a shepherd, an old English sheepdog. And is she getting her walks these days, or he? So many walks, so many walks. <laughs> well, thank you for including me in the presentation today, and uh, I'm really looking forward to, to learn from you both. Thank you, Ryan and Melissa, for inviting us and PIA Law to uh, assist today. 
Thanks for the introduction, David. Thank you, David. And uh, thank you, Melissa and Ryan, for that um, sort of the know-how on how to deal with Zoom. I appreciate that. Um, so Natalie and I are going to be uh, talking today about um, compensation strategies to help us during this period of uh, COVID-19 self-isolation. And um, we have a we have an agenda, just one sec while I try to get this to work. Here we go. Uh, we have an agenda that I'm gonna run through quickly and then I'm gonna give um, Natalie um, a chance to run through some slides. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna be talking about today is uh, the importance of building a routine, um, especially during uh, the self-isolation period. And uh, we're gonna talk about some things that you can do uh, to create this routine, including um, working on your physical skills, cognitive, social communication skills, and emotional. Uh, we're then gonna take a little bit of a break where Natalie's gonna walk you through um, a mindfulness exercise. And then we're gonna move on to compensation strategies to help you uh, build those specific skills that we talked about previously, the physical, cognitive, social communication, and emotional. And we're gonna follow everything up with a question and answer period. But as Ryan said, please feel free to write your questions. Um, he's gonna be moderating and jumping in when, um, when we need to clarify something. So please feel free to, to write all your questions in the question and answer area of the Zoom platform. Okay, great. So this is a really new way to present and I know it's a new way for all of us to interact and learn, but I think we're all getting used to this or we're starting to, whichever side of that spectrum you're on, we're, we're all embracing it or we have to. So we thought in preparation for tonight's talk, uh, clearly we wanted to address what's going on with each of us in our homes. We are all in self-isolation and obviously this is um, really new to us. And we thought we'd go through some of those compensatory strategies that are applicable to what's happening to us right now. We're all speaking, well, Simone and I are speaking from different homes and you'll know, you know, I'm at home, my dog, we talked about the dog earlier, my dog may bark at any point. <laughs> you know, I have my children home, they've been told to be quiet, you never know. So we are all dealing with those same realities and we're, we'll all just uh, be good to one another. So here goes. We are going to talk about the importance of routine. And I'd like to stress that Although maybe that first week of, of isolation was particularly tricky, and I'll admit that for myself as well, it was really a big change. It's not a holiday. It's not really fun. It's, it's unsettling. But the importance of getting back, maybe there were a few days, maybe it was a week. You know, I'm not sure how other people are feeling about that, but it is time to regroup and establish that routine. What is this routine, this new routine going to look like? This was always important. Now it continues to be really relevant. So keeping a consistent wake time, a consistent bedtime routine is important. Sticking to pacing your activities throughout the day. Um, setting the goals. So this could be, depending on what works for you, this could be the night before, this could be the morning of, but keeping to that idea that you want to have a goal for each day. You want to start the day with getting up at the same time, getting dressed, brushing your teeth. You know, I know there are a lot of memes that are going around and, and they are, they're funny, they're good about staying in pajamas. I think I saw one that was, um, you know, I'm in my daytime pajamas and now I'm changing into my nighttime pajamas, you know, <laughs> things like that, which they're great. I, I mean, I laugh at them as well. And absolutely, sometimes it's easier to be a little more casual, but it's also really important to stick to that routine to 
get up, get dressed, feel like you can have a productive day. So I thought now even more so it's really important to emphasize that. Um, the, the idea of healthy meals and hydration, same applies. We all know that this is really important. It's even more important now. This will help us stay healthy, feel good, feel better about ourselves at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of this isolation, which it will end. And I know, again, there are a lot of funny memes and, and you know, how people are, some are embracing cooking a lot more and some are realizing, oh my gosh, I'm eating a lot more. So it's an adjustment for a lot of us. And again, that's why we thought it was relevant to talk about tonight that yes, it's fun sometimes to have a few more meals or a few more snacks, but trying to now rein that in and get into that routine of having the, the set meals and looking at how maybe you can be a little more creative with healthy meals. Daily exercise, um, it's always important. Now even more so, we want to make sure that we structure that, put that in as a daily goal. And is it hard or is it harder? It, it is, obviously it's going to be trickier. And this is where we will speak a little bit later about how to be creative about this. Um, daily cognitive activities. Again, we'll, we'll speak a little bit later about what those can look like, but the importance of setting a goal each day and having that cognitive activity. Daily emotional health, same. We all know that during this time we're, we're listening to the news more, there is a great deal of worry. There are a lot of news uh, reports that may make us feel very uncomfortable. Some of us may be glued to the TV or the radio or social media. And this would be a time where, you know, and we'll speak about the strategies a little bit later, but we also need to build into our day. What is it that's going to make me feel good, relaxed, positive? And we'll go through a few of the, more of those ideas and activities uh, a little bit later on. And then finally, sleep hygiene. So sticking to that, as I mentioned right in the beginning there, the bedtime routine, creating that sleep hygiene routine. So we won't get into the details of it, but I'll briefly mention it's the same time each night. Maybe it is that herbal tea. Maybe it's taking the bath or the shower, reading a, a book that is relaxing, positive. Sticking to that during this time will be really important. All right, so the strategies for implementing this routine. So we all may have an idea that yes, um, we know that this is important, but how do I go about doing this? So Simone and I tried to prepare a few ideas. Some of them are ones that you've probably heard and maybe talked about or seen, but we thought we'd pull it together so that you have an idea of what are those strategies? How do I maintain or how do I start one of these routines? So we've got there, set an alarm and you know, be creative. If sometimes we even need to switch things up, sometimes it's an alarm clock, but we, we tune it out. We don't really listen to it anymore. So maybe it's using a different watch. Maybe it's a Google, um, Google calendar with setting it as a, a meeting that you have to go to. Maybe it's using Alexa or Google Home or Siri. Be creative to set the alarm to get yourself going, to say to yourself, no, I, I want to get up even during this time. I'm going to get up at nine every day or, or maybe it's eight. What, whatever really works, this is where you set your goal and you implement this kind of a strategy to help you stick with it. Um, writing out the goals, you know, this is good old-fashioned pen and paper. Maybe it's putting it in your cell phone. Maybe it's writing it on a, a whiteboard in your kitchen so that you see what your goal is for that day. You could have weekly goals, you could have daily goals, weekly goals, but put it as a visual. Um, it helps all of us when we can see what our goal is, and then it may be more motivating. Even writing a motivational phrase for the day. Um, Self-care, how to implement that kind of a routine. Again, using visual checklists, um, I know with some of my clients, we've been working on even putting little reminders on the mirror in the bathroom for those daily uh, tasks like 
flossing teeth, you know, things that maybe we forget to do as part of our routine, but it is our goal. We could get creative using either sticky notes, a visual checklist, or taking a dry erase markers. I always suggest you test it first on your mirror somewhere or on another mirror to make sure the marker is right. But um, I know some clients have done this effectively and then write little notes there as well to kind of keep motivated with that self-care routine. Um, healthy meals, hydration. So this is a great, let's look at this as a great opportunity to plan meals for the week. Pull out those cookbooks, look at those websites, prepare your grocery list, take a little bit more time during this isolation to plan some, a new meal a week. Maybe, you know, get a little more creative with um, revising one of the, the recipes you already have. And with that kind of a plan, this may be how you uh, write out and, and prepare for that grocery order, which nowadays we all know we don't want to go regular more frequently to the grocery stores. So the planning becomes even more relevant. Planning your meals for the day. This is again, if you take the time in your routine in the morning or the night before to look at what your day is going to look like. Um, what are my meals for the day? When am I going to do the exercise? When am I going to do the cognitive activity? And plan it out. Sometimes people will use um, their, their calendar, their schedule. Sometimes you just write it out. But even planning the meal for that day will help you in the morning to get organized. Maybe it's pulling things out of the freezer. Maybe it's making sure you have everything. And that way you also curb the or resist the the urge to either snack more or uh, binge eat overeat those kinds of habits that you can get into again as with always we have the reminder to drink water um, again people have used all sorts of strategies timers alarms visual reminders just having that bottle of water or I don't have my water now I'm at tea but having the the bottle of water by you at all times so that you're always refilling and, and remembering to have water um, this is again a good time to try and take to cook meals that are not processed we are all at home more we probably have more time to create a few healthier meals so this is a good time to look at that as as a positive so I am going down the, the list here on our presentation, scheduling your exercise, cognitive and emotional activities. So this is what I was referring to just a, a minute ago of just plan that day so that you know when you may do that. Often we want to organize our day so that we do the more difficult tasks earlier in the morning. But again, this is individual. So you may choose to do your cognitive activities in the morning. You may choose to, maybe you like exercising in the morning and you plan it then, but book it as an appointment with yourself so that you know, you know, in the morning I'm doing this cognitive exercise and we'll, we'll talk about what that could be. Maybe it's an online course, but you know that at 10 o'clock, that's when you're logging on and that's when you're doing it. Maybe you're doing your exercise at two o'clock every day in the afternoon. That's how we can start creating these routines. And at the end of the day, you will feel a lot better for that. Um, same with sleep, following the, the time that you wanna wake up, the time that you're gonna to go to bed and, and sticking to it. Um, more ideas for how to motivate yourself to stay with it. Again, the visual reminders, the post-it on the fridge, um, getting family and friends support with your individual daily goals or your routine. So we know that when we talk to people about a goal, it often helps us stick with it. So I'm doing this online course. Maybe somebody else wants to do it with you. Maybe you've decided you're reading a new book and maybe somebody else can read the same one and you have this opportunity to speak to somebody else about it to help you stick with that goal or that routine. Um, we've included an app there which helps in setting, helps you set goals and stay on track with those goals and, and set routines. So developing these new habits, and it's called Fabulous. So 
we'll we'll try. There are a few more apps that uh, apps and websites that will offer. I mean, I know there are lots, and if other people have other good ones, please feel free to share them. Um, I hope we can exchange, especially during the question and answer at the end, uh, ideas that you all have, because I'm sure people are getting really creative with their own. So please feel free to toss out other ideas as well. Okay. Um, next, physical activities. So we thought we'd run through each of the different areas and give you some more ideas of what you can do. So when you're scheduling that routine and you're thinking of, well, what can I do? I'm in self-isolation. So some of the physical activities could be walking. Um, at this point, obviously with um, staying six feet away from people, avoiding busy, crowded, closed off areas. But at this time we are allowed to get out to walk with those precautions in place. Um, so if you feel comfortable, going out for a walk and building that into your day. I often, I know when I go for walks, I try picking times that will be less busy if, if it's possible. I pick routes where I just don't see people so that that way I'm respecting the um, physical distancing. So, but walking is obviously a physical activity, so it's helpful. Um, cleaning and organizing. You know, there have been no, numerous studies that show how many calories are burned when we clean. So it's a great opportunity to do some of that cleaning and organizing that maybe we've put off. And this will also give us a great sense of satisfaction and it's a physical activity. So we've listed, I, you know, maybe some of you have forgotten some of these things and you can look at this list that we've included and say, oh yeah, that, that could be something I could do during this time. And that may be one of the goals that you set for yourself for the, for the next week or two. Um, I, I don't know that I need to go over the list, but I think people, you know, you're seeing on the screen, there's everything from cupboard cleaning, um, changing sheets, window cleaning. I, when Simone and I were preparing this presentation, I said, oh, you know, let's add window cleaning. I was setting up my new home office and of course I'm sitting here more often and looking out the window onto my balcony and I realized how dirty the window was. So of course that was one of my activities in my first week of self-isolation was to clean that window that uh, was reachable and accessible and it was, it was a you know, maybe a five minute task, but it definitely gives me more satisfaction to look out the window now. Um, gardening tasks, uh, you know, same planters, outdoor yard work, it's getting warmer. There are smaller projects we can do in and around uh, the home that way. Even checking your indoor plants, um, outdoor, you know, planters getting soil ready, any small projects. This is also a good time to schedule those, and that is physical activity. Apps. Um, I'm sure, again, all of you, you know, are aware that there are many apps that are available that are great. I know since this self-isolation, I downloaded the Nike Training Club app, and it's been great. I don't need a lot. There's, there are a few workouts that you don't need a lot of space for. Uh, I've pulled out the yoga mat and you know, it's being a little bit creative. And again, booking it in, going back to the previous slide about the routine, booking it in at a certain time so that I know this is the time I'm going to do my, my yoga or my stretch or use that app workout. Okay. So um, I'm going to jump in and talk a little bit about some cognitive activities that Natalie and I came up with. Um, Obviously, this is really good, uh, you know, for your brain and for your cognition, um, and it'll work on your attention, your memory, and, um, you know, your listening skills and comprehension skills. Um, we'll talk later about strategies that you can use to help you with these activities, but what we wanted to do was to give you a list of possible options in case you're not aware of them. Um, the first one is called, the first section is online courses. And the first one is a, a website called Universal Class. And if you go, we, we included the link. And um, what Natalie and I did is we actually turned these slides into a PDF 
um, handout that uh, Melissa and or uh, Ryan will share with all the participants as well. So you don't don't feel nervous that you need to write all the notes down quickly or quickly copy down any of these links because they will be shared with you as well. Um, you my mind, Simone, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no. I just jumped again. I was like, I'm going to jump in, and, but I thank you for saying that. Um, and I, I apologize because we didn't say that at the beginning. Okay. Um, and also to let everybody know we are filming the webinar and that will be available online as well and be sent out. So thank you, Simone, for catching that. We, you don't need to, you know, quickly capture everything in notes because it, everything will be sent out. No problem. Yeah. So even, you know, you know, the, the types of examples that Natalie gave earlier in terms of um, activities to help you uh, create a routine, all of that will you'll have um, easily accessible. So please don't feel nervous. Um, so universal class is a great option if you have some time and you want to um, sign up for an online class. There's all ranges that are that are offered. I mean, everything from, um, you know, accounting to um, how to lower anxiety to um, sewing to knitting to um, candle making. I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of different classes that are offered, and they're um, quite inexpensive, and you can take up to six months to complete any of these classes, and they're organized really, really well. Um, uh, there's a video component, and there's also reading, and so the video will obviously target your ability to pay attention and to listen, and perhaps to even use some of those skills like note-taking, and uh, the reading, obviously, the reading portion will also look at your comprehension skills and um, your ability to pay attention and uh, remember the information that you're reading. And you can also use and practice your strategies that we'll go over later to help you with your reading and your listening. So universal class is a great option. Um, Natalie brought up one that I haven't seen before, and I'm, I think that it's, uh, when I looked at it, it looked very similar to Universal Class, and it was called uh, Great Courses, and the link is right there, and, it, and it's a similar thing. There's all different kinds of courses, historical courses, um, uh, courses uh, related to, um, to finance, to, to, to any kind, I mean, really, there's, there's thousands of topics. Uh, today, I was looking at Eventbrite, and um, Eventbrite not only has uh, educational webinars, but it also has other things like, you know, how to learn how to play guitar or, you know, Photoshop. Um, it'll, they have options to be able to walk through different museums and do tours. There's concerts that are given over Eventbrite. You can take a yoga class. Um, and these are all free options. The Eventbrite uh, website, they're all the ones that I saw, and I and again maybe I missed something, but everything that I looked at was all free, um, and and they're excellent options to to keep you cognitively stimulated throughout the day. And as uh, Natalie suggested, I really recommend uh, really scheduling in an hour or two hours in the morning or the afternoon uh, to do these cognitive things because if you don't do them, then time if you don't schedule it, time will go by. And you know you you can look at the end of the day and wonder you know what exactly have I done today? Um, so scheduling this scheduling in time to do this course is uh, as an excellent opportunity to really focus on your cognitive skills and to work on your reading and your attention and your memory and your listening. Um, the other option, uh, which is also incredible, is to play a board game. And you can do this if you're living with other people, but you can also do a virtual game night um, through Zoom or through another um, web-based option like Google Hangout. Um, game night is fun, it's interactive, and you know, depending on what you're choosing, it, can, it, it will inevitably work on your cognition because you have to listen, you have to think, uh, you have to remember uh, ideas in your head to be able to talk about them. So game, uh, board games or a virtual game night is a great option to work on your cognitive skills. And of course, you know, there's reading or listening to books. 
you know, the, the public library has great resources that are free. Audible also has incredible books. At the bottom, I put in um, the opportunity to listen to podcasts, which are also free. Um, and, you know, when you're listening to a book, the ability to pay attention and focus and, um, and to take in information, it's, it's definitely going to be targeting those nerves in the brain that work on listening and comprehension and working memory. So, um, you know, oftentimes with my clients, we will, uh, we will look to, um, to listen to something in, in our session. We'll, we'll listen to something. And sometimes if we want to really give us a challenge, we'll add some background noise. But that's a little bit more advanced when you're feeling up to it. Um, the, the point is that um, doing a cognitive activity like listening to a book or listening to a podcast, even when you're on a walk, will be a really nice thing to, to uh, work on your cognitive skills. Um, and then, as I said before, taking a tour at an, in a museum through Eventbrite um, is another really good option. And I also added another link at uh, the Louvre offers some online tours, some virtual tours at the moment. So those are some cognitive activities that you can do. And later on in the presentation, we'll talk about some strategies that can help you uh, with those cognitive activities. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, social communication. Obviously, <laughs> social isolation is not the best way for us to be able to be social. Um, but, you know, uh, right now, public safety and our own health is obviously so much more important at this point. So we have to find a way to be able to be social um, given the constraints. Um, I really, you know, when in speaking to Natalie, you know, we, we really feel that having at least two to three social connections a day is, would, would be great and to schedule those in. And it could be something small like having meals together, um, whether it's virtual or if you're living alone, or having a meal with family or friends that you may be living with in your household. Um, but, but those social connections are so important right now, more than ever, um, as we go through this uh, worrisome time. Um, so, you know, some examples would be obviously, in, you know, making a meal together and enjoying it, playing games together, going for walks together. Um, and, and of course, you know, making sure that you're doing this with the people only in your home and not um, and, and not going out to other friends who, who don't live in your own family unit because that would be not social distancing. But if you are living alone and you need to, um, or, and, and or if you are living you know, with, your, with your family or friends and um, have other friends that you want to connect with, um, having video chats are, is a great way to do that. And I recommend video chats as opposed to messaging, just so that uh, you can see the person. Because having some, having, being able to see a face and, and see that facial expression is so important um, when we're trying to connect socially with people. Uh, facial expressions tell us a lot uh, when we're communicating. Uh, sometimes you can see a person is confused or is angry or upset about something. And um, being able to pick up on those visual cues is so important when we're talking about social communication. So I recommend things like FaceTime or um, Google Hangouts or Zoom as a way to connect with people. And um, you can do that, you know, whether it's just having a conversation or as we recommended earlier, playing a board game, a virtual board game, um, cooking dinners together. Um, a lot of people now are signing up for Netflix party, and um, that's a way for people to watch movies together and uh, chat about the details that are happening in the movie. And um, they also, I find a lot of people are doing workouts together. They'll, they'll uh, download the same app and they'll schedule a time, you know, in the morning or in the afternoon when, when they want to work out and they'll do the workout together. Um, the other thing, if people are into gaming, Discord is an amazing uh, platform that uh, allows people to connect while gaming. Uh, and one of the big games that have come out recently is Animal Crossing. 
and it's a Nintendo platform and people uh, spend a lot of time connecting with each other and talking about the different uh, scenarios that they're going to build into this game. And again, as I said, Eventbrite offers um, many ways that you can connect and participate with other people doing um, activities that you're um, that you're aligned on, whether it be yoga or um, participating in a free concert that's being offered or some sort of educational webinar. The, the point is try to schedule two to three social connections a day with other people so that you don't feel alone and isolated. Although we need to distance, we don't want to feel isolated. It's very, very important for our um, emotional wellness. All right, good lead in Simone to emotional wellness. <laughs> so of course, given um, what, we're all, what we're talking about today, emotional wellness is going to be uh, super important as are all these other things, but let's brainstorm a few ideas. Simone and I obviously have come up with a list here, but I, you know, I see on the chat that people are throwing out, uh, tossing out or chatting more, I, you know, more ideas and things that uh, you have used. And I welcome that. I hope that, uh, I know this is a, a difficult forum to have a, a, a back and forth discussion, but please feel free to chat um, to add your ideas of things you have found that have been helpful during this time in terms of managing your mood and your emotional well-being so what some of the things that we came up with that are helpful to us and are known to be helpful are going for that walk um, a walk in nature ideally is if it's possible if it's not then a walk in whatever neighborhood you're in and making it a bit more of a mindful walk so it's not a walk necessarily worrying or, or talking about the news, but it may be more just taking in the fact that spring is, is here and noticing that, in fact, there are some flowers blooming and, you know, we'll start seeing the changes. So making that walk um, emotionally calming and, and mindful, being aware of the new smells in the air, the warmth, the sun. So taking all that in is um, definitely a good thing to help refresh us. Uh, my, mindfulness, uh, meditation, relaxation, breathing. I have found that these are tools that we have to cope. These are, there are so many different apps out there. We've included a few. I know many of my clients um, and myself included really like Headspace and it walks you through simple exercises, simple mindful exercises. Um, there's calm, muse, prana, breathing. I mean, there are so many and, and I'm sure people can uh, send us some of their ideas, things that they've found really useful. Um, I know during my some of my sessions that I'm having with some of my clients, mindfulness has been more widely accepted and people are really appreciating it uh, that much more during this time of self-isolation. It feels right and it's something that you can fit in for, you know, it takes sometimes uh, three to four minutes to do a mindfulness exercise or a relaxation breathing exercise. Yoga, and we've included yoga, and even if you don't know how to do yoga or you only know the one move, again, you can use these various apps. Um, you can go online. There are so many free tools to give you a few ideas, sometimes even a coach. But again, booking something like that in to take your mind off of the other things that are going on and do something that feels good. Um, exercise, which we talked about, is known. I mean, the science is there that when we exercise, our mood is improved. So it's something that just, I, I think we all know it, and it's just a reminder again to build it into that schedule, and even a little bit counts. 
Healthy eating, nutrition as well, this contributes to the end of the day, our feeling of emotional wellness. It contributes to feeling good, it contributes to our self-worth, and I, I think I can't stress enough that this is a really important time to stick to some of those healthy eating principles. Sleep. Sleep is, um, I mean, I like to say it's, it's one of the best um, medications. And I realize that some of you may be experiencing sleep difficulty. And I know this isn't the forum for, you know, dealing with how we manage sleep, but um, there are also various apps and there's lots of information. And if anybody needs any more, please feel free to reach us for more ideas on sleep. But sticking to that routine is one of the strategies and having that sleep hygiene routine is really important. It's important to help with getting the hours of sleep so that we can feel rested and and us contribute to our overall emotional wellness um, as i've mentioned sticking to that healthy routine so again you know the feeling of being productive when we accomplish our goals we feel better at the end of the day when we can start that um, wind down to go to bed and we feel that we've been productive we are calmer and we can sleep better. So overall that um, having that routine and being productive can contribute to overall wellness. Um, keeping a clean and organized home. So again, back to that activity we talked about earlier of decluttering, this also contributes to a calmer mind. Um, I don't think I've met anyone that has disagreed or would argue to that point that when we actually go through and organize an area or declutter or tidy it makes us all feel a lot calmer and productive and not even just productive but just we feel better at the end of the day just looking at that so this is a good time to take on some of those projects and start small. So one small project in the area that you're in the most might be where you target or what you target. Um, I think Simone mentioned a lot of this in terms of the social communications. So planning and maintaining those social connections. So I think uh, Simone covered that well, but that contributes to your feeling of wellness. Humor. There is a lot of humor. There, I have family members, clients, um, colleagues sending me all sorts of videos and memes. And I think some people view them with trepidation or send them to me thinking, I hope this isn't inappropriate. Um, and of course, I don't know everything that's out there. I'm, there could be something inappropriate. However, I really, I usually stress to people that, you no, know, I think humor is... Is a requirement and it is something that makes us feel good and absolutely read some of these funny memes allow yourself to laugh it's it's healthy it's good it you know and there are really some some really funny ones and ask your family members friends to to send you some if you haven't been getting any um, they're a good release or watching a funny movie, a funny video clip, something that takes your mind off of the things that are going on just to, to have that, that break. Um, spiritual reflection and practice. Um, there are lots of opportunities now online as well that um, various um, religious and spiritual organizations have turned to online platforms. So those are available during this time. And, and again, build that into your routine to have your individual practice. Helping others. So we decided to include that because during this time, sometimes we feel, um, especially in self-isolation, some of you may be living completely on your own and you feel that it's hard on you. But when you can find a task or an activity that you help somebody else in some way, it actually makes you feel better. It's, it's as we say, a win-win. And I'm sure most of you can agree that any token of, you know, any help that you can give somebody in any way, whether it's just sending somebody a message that you haven't spoken to for a while, 
or I, I know my neighbor just um, got back from a trip. It took them a long time and, and they didn't have groceries. So I packaged up a few things that I had extra and just put them on their doorstep and until they could get themselves organized. So I'm sure it was helpful to them, but it, it made me feel good. So um, I think there are small ways that we can all help one another out. And that also makes us at the end of the day, reflect and feel, feel good. Um, and actually, and I put in there making cookies for neighbors. One of my neighbors brought, you know, again, we opened the front door and there was a little batch of cookies for my daughter who had been also away and just arrived. And, and they knew that she was under this strict two week quarantine, which I think we all are, but, um, you know, my daughter was thrilled to see these cookies. I mean, it was really exciting for her to think that a neighbor thought of her. So those things do go a long way. And I think we see a lot of examples of that. And, and please think of small ways that you can do that uh, for one another. Um, the other important thing that we thought we'd put there is to try and limit social media. As much as that may contradict a lot of what we've given you as strategies and apps and ideas and FaceTiming, so yes, all of that is good, but placing some limits to that so that we're not glued to, um, to Facebook, to Twitter, to the news, there have to be some time outs for that. There have to be some time where, some, some times built into the day where you don't go look at the news or you don't, you know, keep reading the, the funny memes, you know, taking that break to do some of the other things, whether it's, it is the mindfulness or some of the other things that are included higher up on this list. Um, and, and don't include your phone, your tablet, your computer, your TV. So taking a bit of a break from that technology. Um, so I think at this point, yeah, this is when we said we take a break and I'm looking, it's exactly an hour. I really, I want to practice what we preach. I think we all at this point could take a little bit of a stretch. I'd like you all to just um, grab yourself a water, a tea for, you know, a minute or two, just stand up from, from your seat. Um, I know I can't see you and I don't know if you're all doing this. Oh, there's Simone doing it. So we can see her doing it. I'm going to get up. I will come back in, in a minute. And then we will do a mindful exercise for a minute or two. So I'm going to also get some water. I'm going to encourage everybody just get up for a little bit and stretch and change position. All right. I'm just looking at some of these um, comments that you had left um, with some really nice ideas here. Yeah. Somebody had left a, a comment about how they were cooking. Um, uh, they would cook a meal and then uh, send a picture to their friend, which is a great idea, um, just a way to connect socially. And um, there's one option here about Skillshare, which is an affordable subscription service that offers all sorts of educational skills, uh, skill-based videos. And that's great. I, I, I hadn't heard about that one. So thank you for, for that, Allison. Um, what else? I hope you guys are seeing all of this stuff. Um, there are questions also. There are a couple questions. Mm -hmm. Toronto Public Library also over an e-learning, Gail, for free. Taking nutrition courses as well as mindfulness course at the moment. That's great. Yeah. So, um, Nat, are you going to lead everybody through a little bit of a mindfulness exercise? So, all right. So, I don't know if everybody's had a chance to at least get up and stretch and reposition because obviously sitting for an hour is challenging for all of us. Um, I'm going to do a very brief, this is maybe two, three minutes. Somebody out there is going to tie me and say, ah, it took you four minutes. But anyway, I'm going to try. <laughs> Um, the idea is that it is short and you can fit this into your day at any point, at any time. If some of you out there have situations that are stressful and we haven't gotten into 
uh, too many of these. Um, I think there are so many topics we could have spoken about, but sometimes you may be dealing with young children and you know taking that little bit of a an emotional break or a change to do a mindful exercise uh, is really helpful. The walks are also helpful if the children are looked after. That's another outlet to, to get away. So I'll ask you to sit with your feet planted flat on the floor if possible. Nat, can you speak up? Because um, oh. somebody was saying they couldn't hear properly. Oh, okay. Oh, that's better. I think when you move a little bit closer to the mic. Okay. How's that? Is that better? Not really, actually. Okay. Let me see. I'm glad. All right. I will try speaking louder. Is that any yes. better? Yes. There we go. That's perfect. Better. Okay. I will speak louder. Sorry. Oh, that's a little too loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get this right. It's perfect. All right. So let's go back to how we're seated. So if you can try and find a position that you are most comfortable, ideally feet flat on the floor, not crossed, arms at your side, hands on your lap, falling wherever they may, hands open if you can. Again, just finding a position that is most comfortable for you. Now, if you feel comfortable, you're in your home, you can close your eyes. By all means, close your eyes or find a, a spot to focus on. And then bring full attention or awareness to your breath. So this is where you observe your breath. And there is no judgment, there's no right, and there's no wrong way to breathe. Just observe how you take a breath in and what happens to your body as that breath comes in and as you exhale. Observe things that are going on, maybe in your mouth, teeth, nose. Just pay attention to the physical changes as the breath comes in. Pay attention to your chest, your shoulders, your stomach. Observe how your body changes as you take a breath in and as you exhale. It's for these moments that when your thoughts may wander, I want you to bring them back, bring yourself back to your breath. So that your full attention is on how that breath feels, how your body feels, and appreciate that feeling. Letting any other thoughts go. At this time, I'd like you to do a body scan from head down to, to your toes, where you observe whether you're holding any tension. So it may be in your forehead, your eyes, your jaws or your jaw, teeth. And if you see that you have any tension or feel it, just with the next breath, let it go. Sinking deeper into your chair with each breath. Moving down your body, letting your shoulders sink, fall, your hands like loose spaghetti, just falling, sinking into your chair. And with each breath, 
allowing your body to sink deeper, exhale longer, letting out that breath while you sink deeper into your chair. See if in your stomach you can find some tension. Are you holding your stomach? And if so, let it go with the next breath and allow the stomach to get loose. Let it go. Feel that relaxation through your legs, letting go of any tension right down to your feet, feeling the ground on the soles of your feet. And that allowing the next two breaths to just let you sink, observing how the breath allows for that feeling. Observe that, appreciate the feeling. And then we'll start wiggling our fingers and our toes to just bring our awareness back to the screen, to the room, and to our topic. Okay, so you may wanna move a little again and wiggle. And it's very hard to do, this is a great experiment for me. It's hard to do mindfulness when I'm not getting some of the feedback, but hopefully any comments would be, I'd be very grateful because I am doing a few more of these um, mindful exercises a little longer. So I would appreciate how and what was needed on your end out there to make it more useful although that was very short that felt great for me so thank you <laughs> thank you Simone. <laughs> you're welcome all right so compensation um so now strategies what we wanted to go through now are some of the specific strategies for the various skills that we were talking about earlier so physical, there's work simplification, energy conservation. So this is where we pace ourselves. So this is again, back to that routine that you may be um, setting for the day, build in the principles of pacing and trying to simplify some of the tasks. So if we think of the decluttering, it's not about tackling the one big room or the one big closet in one day with no breaks. It's breaking it up, it's chunking it, setting out smaller goals with breaks in between. So looking at things in a reasonable way to simplify and conserve the energy so that you do feel good and productive, but we still accomplish something in the, the most efficient way. Um, ergonomic strategies. Again, this is, you know, using those ergonomic principles, how you are moving. So how long you sit, lie, sit on the sofa, you know, making sure that you move with the best body mechanics possible. Make sure that you sit, stand, um, you know, trying to remember how not to just get up or lift things with your back, but using your legs, try not sitting too long on the sofa, on a chair, even if it is a course, taking a break. Um, so really thinking about all those strategies. Uh, looking at your desk setup. Now I know I'm in the midst of recreating a home office and you know, how am I setting it up? Am I sitting properly? Am I sitting hunched over? You know, so, you really want to think about how you're setting everything up so that at the end of the day, physically, you feel better. Um, oh, I think we have a typo, cleaning body mechanics. <laughs> when you're, <laughs> how, to, how to clean properly. <laughs> That's like cleaning the windows, you know? <laughs> okay. That's what we meant. I wasn't yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, apply to any activity, <laughs> good body mechanics. <laughs> Um, 
how you're doing exercise, and maybe there is some various aids and equipment that maybe in the past somebody's given you that, and maybe it was an OT or a physio, that maybe at this time you can say, oh yeah, maybe I could figure out how to use that or how to implement that because I do have back pain. So again, these are some strategies around some of those physical activities that we'd be doing. All right. Okay. So we're gonna jump in a little bit to some cognitive strategies now. Um, and one of the biggest things that I work on with um, the clients that, um, that I work with is really trying to build some self-awareness around what you're doing. So I always call it self-questioning. And um, we, it's, it's sort of a conversation that you have with yourself where you ask yourself questions um, not necessarily out loud, although I guess you could. Um, usually we do it in our head. And you can use self-questioning with every activity that you do. So if you're reading a book, for example, asking yourself, am I paying attention to what I'm reading right now? Am I understanding what I'm reading? Because often I find that my clients will say, my biggest problem, Simone, is that I'll read one or two paragraphs and I'll get to the bottom of the page and think, what, what did I even read? I know that I read words, but nothing really sunk in. And the reason that that's happening is because you're not paying attention. So the key with uh, everything is that you have to pay attention first. The first thing is to pay attention then you'll be able to comprehend. And once you're doing that, then you'll be able to remember the information. So the first thing that you have to ask yourself is, am I paying attention? Then you can ask yourself, am I understanding? And then you can say, what am I remembering from this? What was important? Um, what is important for me to remember from this information that I've just read or that I've just heard? So self-questioning is probably the most important strategy that I work on with my clients. The second one is taking notes. And of course, um, taking notes is, is imperative. If you go to a, a therapy appointment, if you go to a doctor's appointment, if you go to an appointment with a lawyer, uh, taking notes will ensure that you're going to remember that information, or at least it's going to be there for you to refer back to. And, you know, when you're taking notes, it's really a great idea for you to just ask the speaker, did I get this right? Is this the correct information that I should have written down? That way, when you refer back to those notes, you know that the speaker has clarified and made sure that what you wrote down is exactly what they said. So clarification, which is the next strategy, is a really important one. You know, really asking the speaker uh, if you got it right. And then one of the things that helps with people's memory is to organize the information. Sometimes when you're reading a lot of information, whether it be a course that you're doing online or, um, you know, in the future, a course that you're doing um, at school or even at work, um, to help organize that information into a diagram or to a graphic organizer can really help to uh, get you to remember that information. Uh, one of the other things that I work on with my clients is to really get prepared for their communication. So if you're going to a doctor or a therapist appointment or to a lawyer appointment um, or, you know, any kind of appointment, um, in addition to obviously being ready to take some notes and to ask clarification questions, write down your questions before you go to that appointment. Write down your notes that you wanna bring up with that person. Because oftentimes when you're in the appointment, you can feel rushed, you can feel a little bit anxious, um, and you might forget something that you really wanted to tell that person. So if you get prepared and write down all your questions beforehand, then you can always make sure that you go through them one by one with the person that you're speaking to and take notes on the, the answers that they're giving you. And 
um, I find sometimes with a lot of my um, clients that um, they find this tricky, uh, the taking notes part, and they, they lose a lot of the information that's spoken to them. And two of the uh, best external uh, memory devices that I've worked with, and I know that Natalie's worked with them as well, is audio note or live scribe. Um, both of those options are excellent to help you to um, record the information that's being spoken and um, be able to refer back to it later very easily. But aside from that, you know, there's other external memory aids like using a dosette for your medication, writing checklists, and, and Natalie brought up really great ones like putting sticky notes on the mirror or writing little notes on your mirror, um, using calendars and alarms and timers. So, um, you know, in addition to the, the sort of internal things that we do, like the self-questioning, we also want to try to use some external aids like the um, live scribe or audio note, or the checklist or the dosette. Okay. Whoops. Um, okay, so the next uh, area that we wanted to talk about was some strategies around social communication. So um, especially now more than ever, communication can be a little tricky because we're obviously doing it remotely and through a virtual, um, a virtual system that is a little bit foreign for us. And um, we, it's hard to pick up on the cues that other people are giving us because um, like, for example, right now, I can't see any of you and you might be completely bored out of your mind. Oh, there's Natalie's dog. <laughs> um, so, oh, there we go. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that, uh, again, going over the self-awareness piece, asking yourself those self-questioning um, questions, like uh, when you're talking, am I staying on topic? Because oftentimes somebody will bring something up and we will digress and go off topic. And after 10 minutes, the person's trying to look like they're interested um, and inevitably we realize, gosh, am I even talking about what I was supposed to be talking about? Or am I talking too much? Does the other person seem interested? If you're talking more than, I always say it's a 50% marker. If you're talking more than half the time in a regular conversation, something might be off with that unless you're telling a story that's very long. But again, even in that situation, I would err on making sure that the other person has an opportunity to, to get in there and to talk and to communicate. It's really a back and forth interaction. Um, and it also gives you an opportunity to show some interest in their ideas, which in any kind of social communication interaction, um, showing an interest is, is you know, a very, very important skill. So, you know, asking yourself, am I staying on topic? Am I talking too much? Am I showing interest in their ideas? Those are three questions that you can ask yourself. Um, one of the strategies that I tell my clients is the strategy of, of um, ACT. So um, to ensure that you're actually getting the right information um, and that you're understanding things correctly and that you're gonna remember the information, uh, ACT is an attention and memory strategy that can help you. So um, A stands for, or is, is an acronym that would go with, ask the speaker questions for clarification. So uh, make sure that you're getting the right information and confirm with the speaker um, that you are summarizing that in your head correctly for accuracy. And then talk to the speaker about how you feel or relate to that information, because that will really help to uh, put that information into your memory. It's called self-referencing. So um, thinking about a story that relates to what the speaker has said in your own life will help you to remember what they've said. And then the last thing that I wanted to speak about, which is obviously something that comes up very often in any kind of social interaction, or not necessarily that often, but sometimes, is conflict. And um, I, I wanted to, you know, bring up some some things because obviously, you know, we're 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 kind of isolated. We're 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 a little bit stressed. <laughs> 
where, you know, I definitely feel, you know, a lot more kind of worry and concern and um, sort of anticipating the, the idea of when is this ever going to end. And um, it can make us feel a bit more anxious than usual. And so um, sometimes we can be a little bit more on edge than, than we usually are. And so conflict can arise. And one of the things that I ask myself is, you know, if conflict arises with somebody is, am I understanding both sides? You know, I know my side, I know how I feel, but how do they feel? And if I'm thinking of some possible solutions, are my solutions going to look at both perspectives rather than just solving my perspective? So really knowing whether or not your solutions that you're bringing up are going to look at both sides of the perspective. And then before I even think to react, have I taken at least one to two days or 24 to 48 hours to think about, to think about things before I react? So we really want to take a little bit more time. We really want to do some mindfulness and to do some breathing and um, to consider um, our side of everything and also their side because um, oftentimes um, after a few days or after a couple days of reflecting, it doesn't seem so emotional. It doesn't seem like such a big deal. And that can really help with our, our social communication um, skills and um, maintaining relationships. So guys, this is really sort of the end of our strategies that we wanted to give. And we want to give you an opportunity now to ask some questions. Um, so I guess, Melissa, do you want to open it up then for everyone to ask their questions or? Yeah, absolutely. So everyone who's on, if you have any questions, you can type them into the question and answer chat box. Uh, Ryan is here too. He's far better navigating this than I am. So he will read out your questions. Um, and also, again, we know everybody's in the same boat. We know everybody listening and watching has their own ideas. Um, so please share those as well. If you share them, we will read them out. Um, and while I'm waiting for some questions to come in, I'll just share some of the feedback that has been coming in as we've been talking. Uh, and even before I do that, sorry, I do want to say thank you so much, Simone and Natalie, for imparting all your wisdom on us. We really appreciate it, and we're always happy to hear you talk, and so grateful for you to volunteer your time and come and do this for us. So thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. I appreciate being here and being part of this. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and so, Natalie, I will start while you were asking for feedback on your mindfulness uh we got yeah. people saying thank you very much that was great very helpful so only positive feedback from the BIST community uh, well <laughs> you're all very sweet then thank you <laughs> <laughs> um and i'll just share some of the other ideas and i think what i was answering kind of as we were going along people who are adding in their suggestions what they have found helpful so different websites different learnings i know simone read a couple while we were all grabbing water um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compile all the suggestions that people are putting in um, and along when we release these slides and the webinar we will also um, include everybody's suggestions. So although Simone and Natalie's suggestions are amazing, we'll also add in all the amazing suggestions from our best Absolutely. Wonderful. package. Um, at BIST, kind of behind the scenes, just so people know, we are working on compiling uh, different meditation apps, different tools that people can use um, while they're at home. Um, so again, if you have any ideas and you're not comfortable maybe sharing them in this platform, you can email us at info at BIST.ca um, and we'll certainly keep adding to our resource page uh, to make sure that everybody is giving all their great ideas and we're all learning from each other. Um, it's a new time for everybody, so it's a good time for us to learn from each other. Um, I'll pass it on to Ryan because I think he's... he's I'm just watching that. all the praise come in for uh, Simone and Natalie. Uh, Seems like everyone has really appreciated the conversation um, and your presentation. Let's read some of these. You touched on so many points about the, this period of change. Thank you, panelists. And um, thank you for the useful tips and websites. You're welcome. Good, you're welcome, yeah. Melissa, yeah. somebody commented on your beautiful blouse. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> thank you. It's very, it's so pretty. <laughs> 
had to get out of my pajamas, right? So. Yeah, it's <laughs> part of the routine. Right. And your stained glass window in the back there looks really beautiful. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you. Thank you're you. welcome. Uh, I'm going to answer one of the questions for you. Um, the slides will be available tomorrow. Well, the presentation will be, and I believe we can probably put out the slides as well, but as far as getting the resources together, what will probably take another day or so before we, we put all of that together, but you, you can see the presentation tomorrow. Um, and for those of you who have a look on the BIST website, um, Ryan can probably correct me where I'm going wrong, but bist.ca slash ABI info series, maybe we'll put the link up in the chat. That's where sure. we're keeping all the webinars. Um, so we can see the webinar that we did last week. We're still working on the first webinar because it was our first time doing it. So we didn't quite capture <laughs> as well as we wanted to, but we're still working on that one. Um, and this one will be live on the BIS website as well. So people can continue to refer back to it. Yes, and just uh, another question came in about all of the weeks. So the, the first few weeks or the first two, uh, they were in person, they were live. So we have slides for those and we'll be posting those shortly as well. They, they weren't recorded as a webinar. Yeah, so I and my dog was barking. But I promised you guys she would. <laughs> That's how real all of this is, right? <laughs> it does. I do like the genuine nature of this. It is quite nice. Um, and, and yeah, and, uh, as I said, you know, please don't worry about, you know, did I get any notes down? Am I, am I going to get all this information? Because um, it, all of the stuff is on PDF. And as Melissa and Ryan said, that they'll, they'll share that with you. Oh, looks like Ryan even shared the webinar already. Just the link to our webinar. So you, yours won't be on there just yet. We're, we're still recording it. Um, right. <laughs> but you, you should be able to see that at least the last two, as well as probably uh, one of our recent community meetings. And to the to all of the participants, what are some of the, I guess the the routines uh, that you have? But have you found that developing a routine is helpful, or um, do you just sort of take your day as it comes? I'm hoping that somebody's going to respond. <laughs> Has anyone stayed in pajamas all day? <laughs> we had somebody who was saying while they were watching this, they were doing yoga. So I wanted to point that out, that people are finding ways to stay home and stay fit. Oh, nice. Going through and this productive. Listening yeah. to a webinar and doing yoga at the same time. Uh, we have a new chat coming in. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right, I see you. <laughs> David got changed. Great. Amazing. <laughs> That's right. So somebody had jeans on and was dressed. Yeah. <laughs> that was David. <laughs> uh, and Lisa said that she's been doing meditation for 15 minutes first thing and then exercising for half an hour. That's great. That's a great way to start the day. Has anybody tried a new recipe? Oh, and then they go for a family walk every day. Um, oh, somebody's on listening the to on the treadmill. Very nice. Multitasking. <laughs> wow, that's now, excellent. Did you ever get the question about um, when to meditate it should you meditate in the morning is it better in the evening afternoon so I, i'm not going to say that i'm the guru on meditation i actually try and suggest that um I'll speak more to sort of mindful practice could be any time any place anywhere but i do think starting your day and i'll speak that a lot of my clients that have started these practices do find starting the day and finishing the day and then fitting it in anywhere in between but the morning and the evening are, are sort of easy logical times and and then building it in anywhere else. Yeah, and um, I guess somebody was saying that, Lisa was saying that uh, their kids have been doing a lot of baking, a lot of delicious crusty rolls and cinnamon buns and cookies, yum. Those are definitely good to share with the neighbors. <laughs> um, and Allison so talked about, um, 
avoiding grocery shopping while also decluttering the pantry. Amazing. Wow. It's great. And I noticed the, the comment just there from um, Lisa that how last week was a little tricky. And I, you know, I started off by saying that I also found last week that my whole routine was upside down. My, you know, my office space had changed. There were so many changes. And that's why I think it's timely that this week we started with, you know, how to establish a routine. We sort of, we're not going to worry about last week or the week before when things might have not been as structured, but, you know, start tomorrow, start tonight um, and, and move forward. It's, it's okay. Mm. Yeah, that's true. You don't always get it right the first time. This is a, an interesting comment from another member about uh, wearing pajamas and switching back to real clothes. It really seems to make a big difference for mental health. Yes. Absolutely. It's, it makes us feel better. Um, also taking a shower. I have one client that we, that is his goal that he does shower and shave, even though he's in self-isolation and put clothes on. So, and it has changed his mood significantly by his self-report. So, yeah. And Lisa was commenting as well that she did share those baking, those delicious baking treats with her neighbors and that she, they started piano lessons with Zoom last week. Oh, and she's really? putting on jewelry. Oh, I like that. That's yeah. Really interesting, creative new things are, are occurring. So, you know, this is the trying to find some of positive, some of the new things that we can do that um, can feel really good. Um, we got a question, Natalie, about um, what do you suggest with routine on the days where headaches or symptoms take over? Mm. Good one. Yeah, and and you know what, I I definitely, I mean, Simone, I don't know if you want, do you want to answer it or do you want me? Because I know this comes up a lot in my sessions with clients uh, as I'm even doing my video sessions with them. Yeah, go ahead. So I... I mean, I guess we'll start with, it's, it's a bit of chicken or the egg because you do still want to try and find some productive activity. Sorry, every once in a while, my screen kind of goes funny. Um, if you can find something that is productive, even while having the headache or, you know, building something into that day that you can feel good about at night so that you can then continue with the sleep hygiene routine, get to bed and then start the next day with maybe a, a bigger task or a bigger goal. But I think having that sense of a meaningful activity, even if it's modified for that day when you have a headache, can still make a difference. So it may not be the, the task of reorganizing the closet, but maybe it is doing a, a mindful exercise and maybe it is going for a shorter walk and using the activities that you can still do while you have that headache um, so that you also feel better about yourself at the end of the day. So any activity that you can still um, try and do while having the activity is really helpful. While having the headache, yeah. While having the headache, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And um, I think that that's, that's something that we try and reinforce, um, you know, as well in our sessions. And then the other thing is, and, and you went over this, is really, you know, making sure that you're getting hydrated and that you're eating well. Um, That's right. And, and having some fresh air because all of those things can contribute. Um, outside of having a brain injury, um, they can contribute to having headaches. Yeah. Thank you, Simone. That's right. Those are the sort of the basics. First, address those basic things. Am I doing all that um, first, to, just to check? Because those then become that much more important in your routine to make sure that you do get up maybe and do the mindfulness in the morning and have that glass of water right away and start with a healthy meal and, you know, right from, um, right from the get-go. Yeah. Um, and just to, to add on to that, one of our members just commented that, you know, it could be something as small as brushing your teeth in the morning or, or folding laundry. Just that one productive thing uh, definitely changed the, your day. Yeah, yeah, it does. And, and somebody was talking about how their daughter has persistent concussion symptoms and um, they made sure that her routine was established. Um, 
but they did say that having the break from school ha with that intense cognitive load has actually been beneficial for her. So that's an interesting point. There's some good has come out of COVID-19. Well, and, and there are, you know, the learning of new skills where, where people now have an opportunity. I had um, one client also express that she feels actually uh, interestingly less anxious because there are less demands on her time. So a little bit of a shift to interests and hobbies. So, you know, this may be a time to, to look at that and, and see what it is that um, makes you feel better and, and why. So a bit of self-reflection. Yeah. And, and one of the other social communication strategies that uh, David uh, McDonald wow. brought up was um, being able to just greet other walkers when you're taking your dog out or not or not taking your dog but just you know saying hello to other walkers six feet away mm -hmm. it's, it can make you feel a little connection that, that's really helpful one of the other this um, comment was a little further up but i wanted to just address it because i think this speaks to what you're talking about just looking at a, a couple of the, the positives of this um, so one of our members said, everything presented in this webinar, I've practiced all my life, but the key is fun. I was not mm. old enough to go out. This is when he was younger and had his brain injury. Uh, so he played at home with his brother. Therefore, I learned self-isolation is free to have fun without social judgment. So I think we said this at our last webinar, dance like nobody's watching, sing like nobody's listening. These are things to do at home right now to kind of just make it a little more fun. Yeah, absolutely. That's I don't know if anybody, I, I have teenage daughters and they have really perfected their TikTok dance videos. I don't know, <laughs> you know, you see them practicing those dance videos and, and laughing and, you know, occasionally they've included me in those and okay, there I am dancing. So. <laughs> Not a good dancer. <laughs> I relate. I think that um, our kids have um, much more confidence when it comes to doing things and not worrying about social judgment. Just in terms of uh, that TikTok is a perfect example. They're, they're posting all kinds of funny videos. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I read one of the comments that somebody's learning a new language. Um, you know, wow, that's incredible. And I've also heard of people doing the guitar lessons. There are many, um, artists, I think famous artists that have started uh, doing some guitar lessons free online. So some really interesting things that have come out. Yeah, I would check out that website Eventbrite because that um, they were talking a lot of different artists are on there advertising that type of service. Great. Uh, one of our members um, was given us a lot of great suggestions over the, the past couple of days. So I wanna thank her for those. Uh, but she says she loves the webinar and all the resources. She's using almost all of the strategies mentioned as of last Thursday. She loves the quietness and slow pace. Now she can really create the routine in life that makes sense to her. I just sent some of my meal creations to the BIS team. Thank you <laughs> to share, we will share those. Um, I feel happier and hopeful for the first time since 2004. Connecting to people on the daily basis is such a mental and emotional booster. Mm, that's nice really nice. Nice feedback, thank you. That's great to hear. Um, and now we have a question. My daughter is two. At what age should I mention what is happening with the world, for example, Corona? Good question. It's a great question. Um, so in my practice, what we do, do you mind if I jump in and then Natalie, maybe you can, um, we've, we've created social stories. Um, so we kind of write our own little stories with um, funny pictures and um, we make it quite simple. So it looks like a little book and um, it would be almost like a story that you read to your daughter at night. And um, that's a really great way of being able to talk about it, you know? And it can be something really simple, like, um, you know, there, um, there is a, a funny virus and you can draw a picture of it. And um, the virus can make us sick. And so we have to stay away from uh, people. Who, it, it's something, and this is, I'm just making this up, but. Um, we have to try and keep our distance from people who we don't know if are sick. 
And uh, one of the things that, and then maybe something positive. So some of the things that we can do is play games inside, um, play in the garden, go for walks. And so you try to bring in a little bit of, um, you know, the, the positive sides to the things that you can still do. Um, and, you know, then maybe some of this, the tips, like we have to wash our hands really well and not touch our face. Um, and so you can do it in a story and you can create it with her and maybe um, draw some of the pictures and have her color them in. Um, I find that that is a really fun activity for that age group and um, it helps them to really, to understand um, what's going on in the world. It's called creating a social story. And thank you, Simone. I, I mean, I also, one of the things that I think about when um, we're teaching children about these challenging topics, um, if you're familiar with uh, the movie about Mr. Rogers and Ms., uh, the show for Mr. Dress Up, right? No, Mr. Rogers. Now I'm confusing myself. Anyway, he spoke about his philosophy was really to not shelter children, but just speak in their language, to give it to them, as Simone's saying in a story, but they're going to hear it, they're going to see that things are so different. So it's putting that into that communication and language that is age appropriate, but not avoiding it because they are seeing and hearing it. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome, that, that member, thanks you, Simone. That was an awesome suggestion. Yeah, no problem. And. Um, you know, also, please feel free, as Natalie had said earlier, you can email us with any questions as well. We're happy to get back to you about if we, if we have any good advice. Lots of great advice. Thank you, Simone and Natalie. Um, sorry, I don't know if you saw the chat came in from one of our other members um, regarding the question of the two-year-old. Um, and she said, there's various of kids' books, maybe a little advanced for two years, though, that explain microbiology. And there's a kids' movie called Osmosis Jones. So there's some other resources to look into. So we'll, um, um, Allison, if you want to send us those links, we'll share those when we share all the resources as well. That would be great. Thank you. Oh, she already shared them. Awesome. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> <Found> it. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you. Oh, and our member says, thank you, Natalie, for your suggestions as well. So thank you. Everyone's so grateful tonight. Thank you, everybody, for all the <laughs> for giving us. We, we're, we all need it these days. So I, we all do appreciate everybody being here and staying to ask the questions and give your feedback. So again, we, we very much thank you. And we very much recognize that this panel obviously has great ideas, but we really do appreciate the ideas coming in from everyone else as well, because we're all we're all our own experts in how to maintain some sort of sanity. Absolutely, we all learn from one another. So, yes, we presented, but it's all of us coming together with our ideas. So, yeah. So outside of the course, um, somebody was taking a, a course in uh, learning a new language. Um, are there any other people taking courses right now or, or trying to schedule in some um, kind of learning at this point? Let's see if anyone comes in. My daughter's learning, um, she's teaching herself sign language. That's what she's Oh, doing. wow. Yeah. Well, listen, my daughter is too. That, that oh. was her goal with sign language. We should get them chatting. <laughs> we <can listen. laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, That's a great idea. idea said uh, to have fun on Google with 3D animals with the kids. I haven't heard of that one, so we'll look into hmm. that. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know about that either. Oh, and one of our members is learning philosophy during this time, so that's a great thing. Wow. Too. And what medium are they using? Are they reading a book or are they taking it through, um, through a course? Can you let us know? Um, you can type in how you're taking philosophy. We can share it. Oh, from the University of Toronto. Oh, perfect. That's great. Wait, I think that's it for, our, oh, no, one more question. Oh, <laughs> an well. interesting <laughs> complete, well-timed, is right. disease and infection control. Uh, <laughs> it's a good time to be taking that course. Uh, <laughs> 
Victoria, would you yeah. mind sharing where you took that course and we can share that out with our members as well? I think Victoria earlier was sharing that um, she's been taking courses through the library, Toronto Library. Oh. If you have your library card, the library has so many resources, um, lots of books, audio books. It is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many opportunities to learn. And, you know, again, as Natalie said, just to try to do something that's not necessarily social media, just learn something that, that doesn't have anything to do with COVID because we're just putting so much information into our brains these days about COVID and the concern around COVID and um, trying to force ourselves away from that can actually be difficult. It's almost like we're addicted to learning about it and to reading about it and to listening about it. So um, taking time to schedule in, learning about something completely different, something that's interesting and um, uh, and can stimulate our brains in a different way and not the part of our brains that um, allow for rumination and, and anxiety provoking neurons. So other, the other types of neurons that we want to really try and focus on, which is um, you know, the nerves that relate to reading comprehension and memory production and attention skills. And, you know, I know I mentioned it when we were talking about the walks, but try the next time you go for a walk to make it a mindful walk. Um, observe all of your senses. So, you know, I, I mean, not touch. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's avoid the touch one. <laughs> um, but your nose, your ears, you know, the smells, the, the different things that you can hear, the different things that you see, and just make your walk a mindful one so that your thoughts aren't about all the concerns you may have, but rather just be in the moment while you're walking. I find it's, it can be a very different kind of a walk. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Victoria said that she would share the link with us and that she's been balancing that course with healthy aging and music therapy courses. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. All right. Questions. Thank you again to Simone and Natalie. Uh, once again, we are very grateful, A, for you being here and doing this, and, and B, just for being so flexible and doing it in this new format than what was originally presented to you. So we, we appreciate it. Um, at this point, Ryan and I usually give you a little present. Um, we have stuff for you and I'm gonna save it in hopes that I see your faces in person soon and we, we share that with you. So oh, thank you. Spending time tonight and doing this with you guys is present enough. Absolutely, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. It gave me my Monday night activity. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Okay, great. I think we'll, we'll end this meeting now, um, but as Simone and Natalie said, if, if questions come up afterwards, feel free to reach out to BIST. We can connect with Simone and Natalie, um, and certainly we can continue the conversation. So uh, this is not the end. It's just good night for now. <laughs> good night. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.